I'm Rosanna, and I'm so glad to continue teaching you about my ideas on how to make playing the violin or viola much more simple and natural and hopefully fun. So in our last segment, we talked about balancing the violin or viola versus holding the violin or gripping, right? We talked about how trying to hold the instrument in anything that resembled this kind of vice was ultimately not going to feel very comfortable uh, over hours and hours of playing, and that the ideal is to really create a feeling of openness in the chest area. One of the problems that many string players have is the problem of sloping shoulders, right? So the sloping shoulders automatically cause a problem because then the instrument wants to fall to the ground, and in addition, it makes it difficult to really maneuver the bow. So we're, what we're going to aim for is to learn how to actually open out the rib cage in a very natural way. By opening out the rib cage, I'm not talking about some kind of forced posture. Certainly, to try to force your shoulders back or open out your rib cage while holding your breath is certainly not what we're after. Rather, I'm hoping that some of these simple movements will enable you to differentiate, to begin to notice the difference between habits that perhaps you've been doing over many years to introducing movements and possibilities that perhaps you forgot about that might actually be easier. So utilizing a couple of muscles that perhaps we don't think about very often, including the external obliques and the latimus dorsi, these muscles enable us to curl and they enable us to straighten, right? Usually, when we think about holding the violin, of course, we imagine that most of the work happens here. But in fact, it's the support that we get that enables us to open out the torso and rib cage that it also enables us to open out our chest area and our arms so that we can become a perfect conduit for the violin or viola. So let's begin uh, taking this a step further, bringing the instrument up like so. First, we started coming down and then looking all the way up to the ceiling and back. We talked about that in our last study. This time, I would like to try it on the instrument with your hand, discovering how it is possible to enable the instrument to fall into the body, allowing the weight to fall into the body, and then fall into the hand. So in the process of playing, we constantly have an interchange where the hand is gently uh, uh, supporting the instrument to where we allow the instrument to fall into, our bo into the body, right? <laughs> this at home. You can do it with an interval like an octave or any interval that you wish. You can try it on each finger, allowing the hand to be the conduit for the instrument to simply relax and noticing how the rib cage and torso can elevate the body and the instrument rather than using the shoulder, allowing you to free up the hand so that it's never having to grab the instrument, allowing you to free up the shoulder so there's never a problem about reaching high positions. It amazes me, actually, how many times people say that playing in the high positions are difficult because they just can't reach. When you think about it, when you're not playing the instrument, Going from here to here is actually pretty simple, right? In fact, it's easier than being out here. In theory, it ought to be easier to play in the positions because your hand is, in effect, closer to the body. But notice what happens when you elevate the, the shoulder and uh, in, uh, in this manner and create like a vice with the head. Of course, I'm showing an extreme example of what people do, but even if it's this much. Notice how that affects my range of movement, right? Notice how that affects the range of movement when the shoulder is raised. But look what happens when I allow the shoulder to drop back down. I easily have a range of movement between my hand and my nose, 
And if I then incorporate my torso, as we spoke about in playing the instrument, you can see how utilizing the torso actually enables the weight of the hand and the finger to fall on the nose. So I invite you to try this at home and feel free to contact us or email us if you have any questions. We'll be happy to address them and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much.